Hey guys, so uh, today I'm doing a different video from what I normally do. I'm pretty sure a lot of people by now know that I do mostly otaku videos, but uh, today I wanted to do a different video from the norm, and this is in light of uh, recent events. So, as you guys probably know, it just recently in uh, part of the issue, and uh, I'm pretty much thinking to myself, here we go again. Now, I'm not going to make light of the fact that, you know, a bunch of kids died. I mean, I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, we should probably keep the death toll low, especially when it comes to students, especially when, when uh, just a short while ago, I used to be a student. However, the way politicians take it nowadays, it's more, they more or less take it as an opportunity to just spat off whatever their beliefs are. Uh, you know, here comes the Republicans to defend their gun control, to defend their gun rights, and here come the leftists to push on gun control. And meanwhile, and after a while, it's just going to dilute back to where it started, where no action is ever taken. Maybe they'll ban a, a gun type instead, and then in a couple of in a couple of months, there's going to be another shooting. And I'm just like, why? This is the same bull crap that we keep going through, and it's not going to change. Not even if we had, it did change when we had Obama. Why do you think it's going to, do you think, really think it's going to change when we have Trump? It doesn't matter. But instead, I'm actually going to try to offer something to change. And this is after learning a small story. Um, basically, during the shooting, there was a kid that was keeping the door open to make sure that uh, one of the, that their fellow students kept going through. His name was Peter Wang and he was a JROTC student, and he unfortunately did not make it. So it did get me to think that there are other people out there that do in fact want to help other people survive, even if it comes at the risk of their own lives. And I've felt that way too, and in fact, instead of just waiting for the government to do something, me and a bunch of friends actually did something. So. I think I should probably explain to you guys before I move on. So basically what we did was we actually came up with a plan and this was based on a sort of Mistbusters uh, thing that we had going on. Sorry about that. The wind's kind of crazy. Now basically what we did is that we arranged ourselves or make sure we keep track so that uh, we had an even disbursement around, uh, around the whole entire school. You know, say for example, I was going to be in the library because I was a library kid. You know, I usually spent my time over there. Uh, I do I try to catch up on some reading, catch up on some homework, or just dick around the computers. And let's say that, for example, a shooter showed up and they actually shot off their bullets. And... It would be our job to just basically sort of try to find a way to surround the shooter once they get within proximity. And what were we planning on doing once we did surround a shooter? Uh, basically just do a straight up ambush uh, by, by using our own backpacks and shields. And I know they, it's probably a dumb idea, but they already have companies out there that say that they have bulletproof backpacks. And uh, quite frankly, I don't think you should spend your money on that because A, you know, it, it's probably most likely going to be bullet resistant and B, uh, if you've ever seen Mythbusters, you would know that there are actually uh, some things in life that actually are bulletproof, like say, laptop computers or in this case, a very thick textbook. Yeah. In fact, they have made, the, they have made a, an episode where they actually prove that up to a certain degree, um, a phone book is uh, pretty bulletproof, but uh, imagine one of these textbooks. Now, don't worry. Now, this is an outdated textbook that I got from uh, from a local bookstore, so that's pretty much it. But, however, just to sort of add the protection, uh, what I usually do is uh, there. What I usually do is just not only do I put a textbook, but I also sort of uh, put in other books. Uh, you'll probably also notice that I have a copy of Sun Tzu. Yeah, I kind of keep a couple of these copies in case. Yeah, you know, so, so sometimes uh, Sun Tzu does apply to everyday life. And uh, we also have uh, other books. For example, uh, my copy of uh, Arpeggio Blue Steel. 
Yes, I'm a nerd, okay? Alright, don't judge, alright? I, I like nerdy stuff. And uh, this I did not have in high school. However, it is a book that I did want to bring up because of the notion that, you know, why come up with it? Gun control is going to solve everything. Well, not everything. And this is uh, Come and Take It by Cody Wilson. And it's basically a book on 3D printed guns or how he came to the creation of the gun known as the Liberator. Which, for those of you who don't know, is a gun that is 100% uh, uh, 3D made. It's only a single bullet, but after all of that, uh, a bunch of people started creating uh, a fully automatic uh, 3D guns. And, uh, some pe and he's even moved on to uh, hard metal where he's actually created milling machines and he's actually working here in Austin. And so, yeah, so it doesn't matter whether, you know, they actually do pass the gun legislation they want. There will be people out there who will get the guns they want, even if it's through sketchy means. And if you really think about it, uh, all the guns really say is that you have to have a license to do it. That's not going to mean that uh, people aren't going to, that people aren't going to get their hands on guns. I mean, for God's sakes, there are people out there who drive without a license. So, you know, it's not like it's going to solve anything. So this is why I created this kind of kind of training video to sort of describe it. Now, let me just re-put this back on the, on the tripod. I really need to get some more stuff. Okay. So, let's say that we were ready to ambush. Basically, this is what would be the plan. So the plan would be, one, coil one of your arms around the back, coil one of your arms around the straps, and just sort of twist, twist your arm on the other one. Keep it nice and tight, that way you can use it with one arm. The second off would be to run low, like this. Now, why would I run low like this? Well, for two reasons, you to protect this, and to protect that. Even if we have this protected, it's not really going to be necessary and it's only going to weigh you down. A uh, bullet to the knee will probably keep you from becoming an adventurer, but you will still to live a relatively happy life. So basically, running like this. Second off, you would be to sort of create yourself a moving target. You can only ambush uh, straight at the person, but also to sort of dodge and leave. Now, the reason why you dodge and leave is because if you think from the perspective of a shooter, they will try to hold. They will usually try to go for a single moving target. You know? So, based and for a single moving target. Moving, hitting a moving target is already hard as it is. I personally shot guns before, and yeah, hitting a target from a certain distance, it does get pretty difficult. But as it comes closer, it does become easier. However, if you keep moving, then that means you also have to re re aim down the side. So you could just fire from the hip. That is a good idea, but you're not gonna hit your target. And especially when your target is protecting itself more, it's not gonna you're not gonna exactly do the damage you want. You might wound them, but you might still be you might still be ambulant, and it's not gonna be exact. Also. And this is only to contend with the other myth, the idea that shooters are, are also, like, say, uh, good gamers or something like that. That is a pretty contended, uh, there is some level of truth in that mythos. However, in reality, it just means that they, if they do become school shooters, then they're just going to be a lot better at it. There's actually been a recording where if they actually do check uh, certain people who do get into professions, like, say, in the military, or in uh, in, the, in law enforcement, they're usually they're usually usually the best uh, the best shooters end up being good gamers. However, in the same way, we can also take a lesson from video games. And essentially, if you've ever played Call of Duty, you will know that there's a shield that uh, that there's a shield option in that game. And not only that, but there's also you probably also seen videos of it where just players just swarm. A single, a single player carrying shields and just keep them trapped in there, sort of to just screw with their heads. This the same concept applies. However, this time you also have another option. 
let's say you actually do manage to get in there, you know, just to get in close to the point where the muzzle is right there. One thing you can sort of do is sort of do a takedown maneuver. One, bash your rifle out of the way so that it's no longer aiming. They're no longer, they're no longer pointing at their target. And second off, just sort of do a takedown. Now you can do various takedowns. You can also do a good old fashioned hook punch or just an up front kick. So just to uh, demonstrate, bash the front or bash the front kick. This is something you can also pick up. You can also use other objects. Like say for example, you have like, uh, I don't know, say for example, this small ball. Say for example, you have a stress ball, you get really stressed at school, and you can probably do something else with it. You can probably say distract the shooter by aiming this at their head. One, run ahead him, back. It's really not that hard. Now multiply that with other people, have them surrounded, it's game over for the shooter. They have done little to no damage, and you can basically just keep them down in custody until the cops show up. Now, this probably wouldn't even have to happen, and this is what I think is the best idea. Have law enforcement available within the school. Like, in, I've gone to two high schools, and let me tell you this. Uh, the first high school, it is considered a pretty ghetto high school in the sense that, uh, you know, there was always a, there was always something, like say, a pregnant girl is finally gonna give birth in one of the bathrooms, or they find some guy with coke or whatever. And they've usually had like a police officer in there. Now, in the first, it was pretty hectic, but that's because they then that's because you know there were more reports of people using drugs. There were more reports of people in, getting into fights in the school. But however, that, those were just reportings. And by the second year, things have sort of cooled down to the point where where you know student scores were starting to go up because they were no longer distracted by fighting. They were no no longer distracted by gang violence, and eventually the school have got more funding to the point where we were able to get new uh, new classes like a Vietnamese class or a Mexican American uh, history class. Now the second school we didn't have that, and it was quite frankly a lot better of a school. But once uh, Sandy Hook started, it's like we were all we were all just like on the edge of our seats where we were like. Uh, you know what we're gonna do we're practically studying ducks and then after you know we were so we were a bunch of JRTC students who eventually started a movie club from there we moved on and said you know what maybe we can protect ourselves and we have the means to do it now personally I wouldn't want to have to do this but to anyone who maybe wants a peace of mind in in there you could probably use what I taught you right now into your own self-defense and maybe conventional self-defense. However, I think uh, what we should take home from a lesson in this is that um, where does this even start? Well, usually a lot of the uh, shooters, unfortunately, are people who are going through clinical depression, are people who honestly are mentally unstable, and typically are almost friendless. They are almost completely uh, void of any human contact, and I think that's the I think that's probably the lesson I wanted to share with you guys. Like, be friends with whoever you can, and try to seek out other people who maybe, even if they do have opinions that differ from you. Like, I've known a bunch of people out there. I've known one guy who was a bit of a loner, and you know, after sort of connecting with him, um, you know, I think we both started to sort of uh, enjoy each other's companies, and we still have uh, have a pretty good company with each other as well. You know. And you know, it's, that's just the thing. You know, just try to just try to seek out people who you only need one good friend. You know, it's like for some reason we're having this competition. Like, say we have dozens of friends online, but we don't have a single good one in the real world. And that's what we really need. We need just one good friend. That's it. So until then, hopefully I come up with. Uh, Come up, hopefully I come up with something better, but uh, until then, this is me saying thank you for being smart, stay safe, sayonara.